Welcome to Power Concepts. In this video, we will create a simple macro in Excel 2010. A macro is a program inside of Excel which can record your actions, allowing you to save them and then repeat them again at a later time whenever you need them. In this video, we will create a simple macro which will turn cell A1 the color red. You can find the controls for recording or viewing a macro on the View ribbon over on the right in the Macros group. We have a two-part button here and we're going to use the bottom part of this button to see all of our options. You can see Excel gives you the option to view or record a macro or to use relative references. We're not going to use relative references today, we're just going to stick with view and record a macro. In the desired workbook, simply choose record macro. Excel will ask you for some more information about your macro before you begin. Firstly, your macro will need a name. I would recommend choosing a really obvious name for your actions as this will help you remember what the macro does when you try to look for it later. I will name this particular macro red as that describes pretty well what we want Excel to do here. Notice you can also choose to create a keyboard shortcut for this macro. Excel just needs you to choose a letter for the shortcut. If you would like to take advantage of this option, be sure to choose a letter that you don't currently use for any other shortcuts as your macro shortcut will supersede any existing shortcuts. For example, if I always use the keyboard shortcut Control c to copy, I should not use the letter C for any of my macro shortcuts. Since I don't use any shortcuts with the letter R, I'll enter it here. This will work great for me since I find it easy to remember that R stands for red. Next, Excel wants to know where to store your macro. You can choose to store it in this workbook, a new workbook, or the personal macro workbook. This last option, the personal macro workbook, will make this macro available to me in any Excel workbook I open on my computer. For my purposes today, I'll choose this workbook, meaning I only need to use the red macro in the current Excel workbook. You can also choose to type in a brief description of your macro here. This would be a good idea if you have a lot of macros. In the future, a description could help you decide what's the best macro to use from a larger list. When you're done, click OK. Now is it Excel is recording my every move until I tell it to stop. I can tell it's recording because I can see a so small square down in the bottom left corner. This is the Stop Recording button. The first thing I would like Excel to record is selecting the cell A1. Even if A1 is already selected, be sure to click on it. Remember, in the future when you use this macro, you may not be on cell A1 so we must record ourselves clicking on that cell. Next, carry on with your actions just as you would like them to be repeated. I want that cell to be filled in with red color, so I'll click on the home ribbon, and in the font group, I'll choose the color that I want, red, from the fill cell dropdown. Once my cell's red, I'm done, so I should tell Excel to stop recording. Just click on that little square down in the bottom left corner, and you're done recording. Let's check to see if it worked. Imagine you need cell A1 to be read on sheet 2. I'll just click on the tab for sheet 2, head to the view ribbon, and the macros button to try and find my macro. At this point you can either use the top part of the macros button or click on the bottom part of the button and select view macros. Both options will give you the same window which will show you all the macros that are available to you. Of course, if you already know the keyboard shortcut for the macro that you need, for ours it would be Control R, you could skip this step and just use the keyboard shortcut Control R. If I need to pick from a list, I should look for my macro here. If you can't see the macro that you need, keep in mind that there is a dro drop down here at the bottom which will show you macros from any other specific workbooks. Note that to use a macro from another workbook, that workbook should be open at this time. Of course, you can see our macro here, red. Be sure the macro you want is selected, and we can see the description down at the bottom to help us choose, and then you can just click the Run button over here on the right. Notice how quickly Excel has turned cell A1 red. However, there is still one last important step before we're finished. If we want to use this macro again in the future, we should be sure to save this file as a special macro-enabled Excel file. Go to File, 
and then Save As. Choose the location you would like to keep this file, such as a shared drive or let's say the desktop. Be sure to give your file a name, and underneath the name, click on the Save As Type dropdown. From the list that appears, be sure to choose Excel Macro Enabled Workbook. When you're done, click Save. If you close this file and view it in its file location, you'll notice a different icon. Here you can see I saved my file onto the desktop, and my icon has a little orange symbol with an exclamation mark. This is a clue for you that this file has a little extra programming, a macro. Whenever you open up a macro-enabled file in Excel 2010, you'll see a yellow bar like this one near the top of your spreadsheet. Any macros are automatically disabled, just in case they contain a virus. Since we are the only ones who've made any changes to this workbook, I'm safe to click on the Enable Content button. Now I can use any of the macros stored in this workbook. Always make sure you're confident that the source of a workbook is reliable before you enable content. Thank you for checking out this Power Concepts macro video and have a great day.